Rightio guys, so under the back of the car, here's a couple of bulkhead fittings that go through the spare wheel tub and into the boot to the rest of the fuel system. Boring I know, but hey, just bear with me. So we've got a main feed, which is a bigger one, and we've got the return. And they go all the way through here. A couple of peak lamps, I haven't actually done the rest of them just yet, but that follows through all the way through. There's a bit of fire sleeve on the feed line. We need some fire sleeve on the return. And that fires up into the engine bay. Whole fire will be in the engine bay next. Right, so in the engine bay, here's our main fuel feed with the fire sleeve on it, attached to that fuel rail. It goes over there, it's attached to the other fuel rail. Here's our regulator. These are returns, so they're running the opposite direction to what I'm showing you, but there's one, goes around there, goes around the other side, all the way to the front, onto that fuel rail right there, and same deal on this side, ta-da, that goes from there, goes around to there, and onto the rig. And what that means is, all the major components of the fuel system are now in place. We need a bunch of hose clamps, and we need some heat shields, and we need some, uh, P-clamps rather, and we need some things to tidy things up but if I tightened up all the fittings you can actually fire up the fuel system and in theory uh, none of the fuel would fall out of the car we need to test that anyway so that's one thing that's been done today so that's pretty awesome another thing to show you underneath hold fire another thing that was done there's an oil filter here there's a fitting and some hoses some p-clamps holding it onto that bracket there and a fitting on the engine with more hoses so we've actually got the oil system complete don't worry about that clearance there that looks really really tight there's actually it's just a little bit of room there and i can make some more very easily because i've done something else that's cool we'll come around this side because there's better light for you guys oh look adjustable end length onto the sway bar so don't worry about the threaded rod that'll get replaced when we figure out the exact length that we need modified some white line sway sway bar brackets these ones right down here modified those to fit the end links a little bit better and got that all sorted out so we've actually got a sway bar hooked up and working as i said don't worry about how close it is in there it looks really close the sway bar actually swings that way as the car goes down so it actually gives it more clearance that's extreme travel at the moment with no weight on anything so she's looking good we're getting there and actually achieving something anyway i'm going to put the camera down see if i can sneak in some more work today and um get this thing going soon eh? we should have our wheels shortly and we should have the diff for the back I really want to get on with, let's see how better this camera is at picking up all this rubbish at the back here. I really want to get on with fixing this, because this is disgusting. But I want to wait till we've got our wheels and our diff in the back here, and we can see what we need to do, just in case I need to trim 5mm off all the side of this or something like that. So I don't want to chop that up just yet. There should be some video, hopefully I've, oh, might have stuck it in another video or stick it in here with the Gloria, mix the two together, what does it matter, eh? Done a little bit of um, aero modification on the march, just trying to seal off this engine bay area to try and get the air doing exactly what it's supposed to be doing. You guys know the details, if you don't know the details, it's just stuff and things. But uh, I've still got a bit of a hole to fill up on this side. So I'm going to get on with that. Yes. Progress. Progress is good. All right. Fuse bite. All right. Moving forward, we need to put um, one of those shiny, finny thingies that lives in this gaping big hole here to cool down all the squishy stuff that goes through the noisy thing there. So I've got one of these sitting on the let's call it a bench my mobile trolley work bench thingy that was out of the sylvia that the uh that the v8 and everything has come out of so obviously that's all been 
conjured up to that guy's um, preferences to fit into the package that he had. Um, it's not ideal, not perfect for what we're doing, but it probably will work. It's been converted to a triple pass, so um, I don't like that. It's also been converted to AN fittings, AN style fittings. So that one's quite a big one. It's like a, sorry, I'll put it in the middle for you. It's like a dash 16 or something. It's quite a large fitting, right? So put your finger through there. That's probably going to flow enough. That'll be all right. We could use that if we wanted to. And then that's like a dash 12. I can't even put my finger in there. So I'm not sure the guy was thinking that's going to absolutely struggle to call an engine that can potentially make 500 maybe even 600 horsepower you're trying to call it with you know it's basically not much bigger than a garden hose um i think that would have been an issue for him but anyway he's been saved from that disaster so what i'm going to do is i'm going to chop that off i'll probably try and save it i don't think there'll be anything wrong with it i'll put it on the bench and might use it for something I'm doing later on. Same deal with that. I'll chop that off, put that aside. Perfectly good fittings that can be used for something. My stuff, not customers. I will remove the, the triple pass conversion because I believe that's just going to restrict the flow through the radiator too much. And it will actually make it run hotter. Um, despite a lot of people thinking you need to cool the um, slow the water down to make it cool better that actually provides less cool water to the motor so it actually makes it run hotter but um it's a whole heap of thermo laws of thermodynamics and everything going on there and it's usually way above the heads of um, petrol heads so i won't get into that i'm going to yep do what i just said and the theory is with slightly different mounts on here uh down the bottom there it's actually just going to basically bolt straight in, which would be really good. So I need to chop those off. They need to be slightly further in and slightly further forward. And they will, let's see if the camera will follow me around here. They will go on to... Oh, I can't catch it. There it is. That hole there. And that hole there. Which are, those are the mounts for the Sylvia. Those are the original factory ones. I'm not sure why they have not ended up. Nope, I do know why. So because I shortened these mounts up, they're on an angle like this in the car. And because I've shortened them up and moved them that way, each of those holes has come across as it's come back that way. So that's that's why our mounts don't bolt straight up like, like they might have. So uh, that's cool. I'm going to stop talking. We'll get on with it. Getting sidetracked for just a moment. So some of you can have a chuckle. These are my spare brake pads. These are these are good ones for the little march. So these are really good brake pads that come from Z1 Motorsports. They've done next to no time at all in the car. That we found they were a little bit too aggressive. So I've got a set of those for the back. That's all good. I decided to check the brake pads that were in the front of the march. And um, yeah. Yeah, I got my money's worth out of those. So we need to have a chat with the guys at um, Z1, get some more brake pads. These are probably a little bit too bitey, a little bit too aggressive, and the brakes are quite large on the march, so they probably won't work out that well. We need something that um, gives less bite but handles heat and lasts longer. So I'll have a talk with Josh and the boys, and we'll get some sorted out for next season, but I'm not even going to try and order those at the moment. We've got about a week and a half before our next round, and all this coronavirus stuff might hold up travel for parts and things so we'll forget about that and we'll carry on we'll focus on this because this makes me money to pay for those things that are sitting on the bench god my bench is messy again that i swear that was clean not long ago yesterday it was actually it was good I trashed it again all righty all right so two seconds after putting the camera down i had a genius thought after i um genius if i do say so myself after i've taken all the fans and everything off this and just had the bare radiator there took the little rubber hoses off the mounts that have been butchered look at those angle grinder marks never mind someone's chopped them down to a different size 
for whatever reason. But um, I don't actually have to shift those at all. That was, um, there's a better way to do it than that. What I can do is just move the mounts, just shift the holes. So you'll see I've, I've drawn a line on the masking tape there on that side and over on that side there. That's as far as we have to move those. So I can just drill a hole through there and put a rubber grommet on there and don't worry about using the factory mounts, which is what I was aiming for originally. And that'll be that. That's the bottom end of the radiator all mounted. Too easy. So then I've just got to sort out the tubes I was talking about. Remove those fittings and put the proper hose tubes on there. Barbs. So we can run our decent Nissan genuine hoses. Good, good, good. Alrighty. It's one of those uh, fluidy, cooly, finny, shiny things sitting in there. So I bowled down the road to Synco Customs and got a couple of beans to weld together to get that top fitting under our air intake. So that's good. It's clear. I can move that quite a long way before that hits that. So that'll be a pretty simple top hose there. You could go literally straight from there. It's hard to see the other fitting. It's black thermostat fitting there straight between those two but obviously you don't want a straight piece of hose there you want something that's got a um, bit of movement in it so it'll have a bit of a dog leg in the middle of it just to give us some backwards and forwards and left and right and all that sort of carry on so I haven't done the bottom hose yet the bottom fitting you'll be able to see right down smack bang in the middle of the frame there is no fitting so it just needs to come straight off that and then a um, bit of a, a Z, I guess, up to this one over here. Out of that, down there, down there, done. So I'll get on with that tomorrow. And we'll have most of the cooling system done. I've got to put the heater core back into the car. That's part of the dash and everything. So there's a couple of fittings over that side. I can't do that till I've sorted out everything I'm doing with the wiring harness. There's a lot of stuff I want to tuck up in behind that. So I'll get on with that later on. But um, getting there, it's another thing actually in the car. It's not finished, but it's in the car, so that's a start. And I'll get on with all that spaghetti later on. Now that I've got a radiator in there, and I know where that's going to sit. I can sort out all my clamps and all that sort of carry on for the wiring harness and everything else. She big job. But we're getting there. Found some Bundy tube while I was looking for something else earlier on today. It reminded me I've got to do the um, brake pipes, clutch hose, all that sort of carry on. So I'll start on that stuff shortly as well. Heaps to do. Alright, cheers boy.